Hello, um, uh, I am really conscious. Okay, sorry. Um, I'm doing this video because um, I am planning to really try to um, help people, especially when they're applying for their citizenship and how they're going to do that. Um, yeah, so, so basically that's why I'm doing this. So this one is for um, uploading the documents. So as so you can see here, um, when you upload your documents, so to upload your supporting documents, click on the upload document link for each member of your group to access their document um, upload page. So I'm the only one applying. And then, so this is my name. And then I, this, these are the things that I've uploaded, um, the number of files, and then the upload section. And then to submit your uploaded documents to the UKVI, now you have the option to submit. And then you have like up to 48 hours before your scheduled appointment to sort of like really try to submit this. So um, I'm submitting this today. That's why I'm rushing because I um, today is like the 48 hour before, um, before this closes. Um, if you click that link, you will see here, sorry, the internet is, really slow but um before we okay here so the documents for mike lloyd for m mine would be so there are tips um that they will put here for you to upload your document so to make your visit at the service point as much as possible it's recommended to upload your documents or visa via the self upload facility you can upload documents in stages right up until you attend your appointment making it easy and convenient when uploading your documents there is some easy uh, to follow guidelines set out below to ensure that you're successful okay first of all um there is a, an extra uploading um uh sort of like service in the in the do document section sorry in the, in the section where you're going to to apply so in the office and um when i applied for my indefinite leave to remain i availed that because i don't want to scan myself and i just want them to make sure that this, this kind of properly but this time around in my um, application for naturalization to become br british citizen i opted to upload the stuff myself so these are the tips that i followed so document type is like on completing your online application you can be you have received an access to uk checklist specifying the documents required for your application the documents are marked as either mandatory or or other documents so a description of mandatory documents required for each category is provided in the tabs below. So there will be tabs, as you can see here. So there are tabs, okay? And then next would be category. So um, your supporting documents need to be submitted under the recommended categories. Our upload facility allows for this. Having the right documents in the right category will make documents easier for to find and review. So we suggest that you organize and upload your supporting documents in the correct categories file format so please upload documents in pdf so pdf preferred so i uploaded all the documents actually in pdf and you can upload it to jpeg or png format then the file name you shouldn't you sh it's need it needs to be as simple as possible so for example bank dash statement dash april to dash 2018.pdf not not like with with like weird characters or like dots um they don't want that the next would be it um, file size so it has to be less than 6 mb uploading larger files will result in documents being rejected so please ensure that the file um is as small as possible and not more than 6 mb if your document is over 6 mb please separate into parts and create separate files to upload there's no limit on the number of documents or files you can upload and then scan in grayscale or black and white and then there's also like one um scan between 100 50 dpi to 300 dpi i found that the macbook or the mac scanner app is actually can actually have you can have these options easily so i i suggest you sort of like use that um my partner is um into tech and he's a tech guy so he recommended that rather than using like the windows and all that so um that was really helpful um in this in the documents that i've put i have actually um you know, like the bank statements are for, for say from Monzo or like from Santander or something like that. Sometimes they have colors on their on their their statements. I just I just said like you know what I'm tired. Like I just I will just put the the, the like up because it's mostly black anyway. It's just that bit. So I didn't scan it and then and then you know do it again. I I just uploaded it straight away. Um. Well, we'll see what the results are. I don't really. Uh, I'm just I'm just in a point where I'm just really tired. I'm sorry. 
Um, it's been a long day today. Yeah, and please do not, so the subject is please do not upload password protected files as, as the caseworker will not be able to open them for assessment and therefore your application may be delayed. So these are the things that I've do uploaded. So mandatory documents for me would be um, document type proof of application. That would be my passport um, and then optional documents you have in the other. So sorry, below, below is a list of optional document categories. Please ensure you check your Access UK document checklist before including documents in the categories below. So for some application routes, optional documents offer you the ability to provide evidence in a number of categories at your discretion to satisfy immigration rules. So others, I put here my um, consent because, you know, like there is um, so when you when you apply in the above website actually they'll give you a checklist so this is what the checklist looks like and i'll probably show this in a separate um loom video um what it looks like um but yeah so it's it's, it's basically this is um the, the the checklist and um it shows here the first will be um the passport uh issued by the philippines for michael sabjohn a proof of living michael sabjohn's proof of freedom for immigration restrictions official transcript of letter to refer declarations act this letter that confirms the qualification meets or exceeds the recognized standard of bachelor's or master's degree or phd in the uk and confirm the level of english to which the degree was taught or research and then to confirm biometric person's permit and then apart from this you also have sort of like that consent form and a consent form of like when you've applied for ILR, it's also like a form where it show like it just asks you basically if that they're, you're happy for your data to be to be searched for, and and that's that's it. And then next would be my tier two visa decision letter, which I have. I just put it there to be honest. I don't think it, you really need it. Um, and then old passport, so it's like this kind of a passport that I used uh, to enter the UK. And then the residence in the UK, I've put here my. Um, the reservation form for my previous tenancy uh, tenancy agreement of my current address and then the tier two uh, visa um, entry clearance so like that's it's like the vignette basically when i came here first in the uk and then the brp so just like my brp scan next would be my finances so this one i am having issues with my current because I, I i tend to switch a lot with banks because i just wanted i just want the, the free money basically so i had the uh, conflict <laughs> sorry i just had a conflict with my bank now and they've they've messed my so i can't access my thingy for the last two months but that's fine i have other banks so i just used those other banks like um natwest and all that and i have a joint account with my my partner so i've just put that there as well um i just put um all the bank statements so as you can see and then i put the pay slips as well the february pay slips and the pay slips for six months bank statements um the last six months as well i've put there in the proof of business i put the p60s so the p60s they tend to make the when i scan them they tend to have a really really um how do i say it? they tended to have a really heavy file so i um, separated that into two files and then life events I put my for me to just put something there I just put my certificate of live birth medical information I know don't laugh at me you can do whatever you want this is my thingy I'm just sharing okay and the next would be um uh, medication and in medical information so um my medical appoint it's, it's like just medical appointment letters if I had the time more time like I would have put here I probably like my gp you know like when you receive your nhs number or something like that um and then sponsors and employment so i have here my two referee declarations that i have um because in the in the document checklist you will have two referee declarations and um there are lots of videos in youtube how to do this um i'll show you mine now actually so you have two there are rules um for your referee declaration so one has to be like a professional and then one has one one it, a professional british citizen is the referee number one and then the referee number two is another like any any other sort of like nationality but um should be like have a good quality standing so the referees must not be a relative not be a solicitor or agent representing you in this application not be related to the other referee not be employed by the home office not have been given 
um, an impressionable offense during the last 10 years unless that conviction conviction can be disregarded in line with the table shown in the guide. Have known the applicant personally, be willing to give full details of their knowledge of the applicant. Um, advise the Home Office of any reason why the applicant should be registered. And then the referee declaration will the sign here in the back. And then you'll have in the photo, it has to be an approved photo. And then the photo on the back, you have to write your name and date of birth. Um, that's it for that. Um, and then uh, what else? So that's the referee's empl current employment um, certificate with UCLH. Mm, yeah, so I I did um, approach my HR, sorry, in my in the hospital that I work with and then current position um, offer letter for the current post. So I, you know, when I had my current post, um, I just put the current the offer letter, employment contract with UCLH issued on the entry to work, a certificate of employment for previous um, Philippine employment um, in the Philippines. So I just put that there as well. And then proof of identity, I have the vignette, um, the absence, uh, the days absent in the UK from employers, I just put that there as well. And then the birth certificate I have put here as well. And then for the under the educational, I've put my nursing board certificate. It's, it's just specific in the Philippines. Don't worry about it. And the nursing certificate, board nursing exam result. So I've just put that there as well. It's my grade. Um, it's a Filipino thing as well. Don't worry. And then diploma, of course, like your nursing qualification. And then I've, I've taken IELTS twice. So the UKVI and the non-UKVI. The other is for the NMC and the other is for the UKVI thingy. And then I've just put everything there. So that's all that I have. So let's just um, double check. So document checklist. So I have the passport, proof of living in the UK, which includes all of those things. Official transcript of, or letter of Michael Sabajan to prove that the English language required the, the, I, the IELTS. Um, two refer declarations so and we're done. Actis letter, I don't think... Um, so when you actually apply, they they ask you to just tick everything, even if you don't have the documents or it doesn't apply to you. So that's what I did. That's why like this ECTIS, E C C T I S letter. I don't have this, but when I applied here in the UK, I had to take an English exam. So that should be okay if that makes sense. And then current biometric residence permit um, for Michael Lloyd Sabjan, which is which I have. So I think that's it. Thank you very much for watching um, this video. I'm just doing this before I submit this so that I, you know, I think, I think, you know, like we're, we're, we're all good. And then I'll just double check this now and then I'll submit this. And then um, I'll probably make like a new video about, um, about how to probably like like how I started the 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 application and how I've and probably how I've um you know how how I did the application but basically just to let you know everything's free like I, I my appointment is free my like I didn't buy any like extra service in the because there when when you do the application you'll be given like checking service like they they give you like a text alert service which is two pounds um scanning 55 pounds and then there are some like premium lounge services in your appointment i think 100 plus pounds but if you sort of like look forward and look in other centers there are free slots so i just av avail the free slots the um the cost of the 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 application as of today, uh, I mean, as of that, uh, since I applied, so it's like March 2022, it's 1,349.20 GBP. So that's 1,349 pounds, um, basically. And that's that's the cost of it. And um, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll sort of like um, update um, soon. Um, and hopefully that will help. Um, of course, this will be like for my classmates or other friends that will be applying soon as well. And I'm just trying to help. Um, in terms of like what I what I did and what I put in the in in my application. So yeah, thank you and see you. Bye bye.